Hello everyone, I'm Zahid Abbas. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Maculous. In this video, we are going to learn about the trigonometric formulae that include quotient identities, product identities, reciprocal identities, cofunction identities, and Pythagorean identities. And we shall learn all of these formulae with the help of this magical figure known as magic or super hexagon. Let's start learning how to draw and then play with this magical figure. Here is a regular hexagon. It's one of its diagonals. It is the second one and it is the third one. Here are some points that include six vertices and the center of the hexagon. Write first trigonometric function sine of theta here, second trigonometric function cosine of theta here, third trigonometric function tan of theta here, fourth trigonometric function cot of theta here, fifth trigonometric function secant of theta here, and sixth trigonometric function cosecant theta here and in the center right one. Let's move this figure to a little bit on left side so we may write something on the right side. Okay. Now observe this clockwise orientation of arrows. What does it define? It defines quotient identities. How? It states if we pick any of the six trigonometric functions, then this trigonometric function would be equal to its next trigonometric function divided by the next trigonometric function. For example, if we pick tan of theta, then it would be equal to sine of theta divided by cos of theta. It gives us quotient identity number 1. Similarly, if we pick sine of theta, then it would be equal to cos of theta divided by cot theta. It gives us quotient identity number 2. And if we pick cos of theta, it would be equal to cot of theta divided by cosecant theta and it is the quotient identity number 3. Similarly, cot of theta is equal to cosecant theta divided by secant theta. It is the quotient identity number 4. And in the similar manners, cosecant theta is equal to secant theta divided by tan theta. It gives us quotient identity number 5. Similarly, secant theta is equal to tan theta divided by sine theta. It is the quotient identity number 6. Wow, it's wonderful. Let's move to next slide. Have a look at this anti-clockwise orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines quotient identities as well. How? It states if we pick any of the six trigonometric functions, then this trigonometric function would be equal to its next trigonometric function divided by the next trigonometric function. For example, cot of theta is equal to cos of theta divided by sine of theta. It gives us quotient identity number 7. Similarly, cos of theta is equal to sine of theta divided by tan theta. It is the quotient identity number 8. Similarly, sine of theta is equal to tan theta divided by secant theta. 
it gives us quotient identity number 9. In the similar manners, if we pick 10 of theta, then it would be equal to secant theta divided by cosecant theta. And it gives us quotient identity number 10. Similarly, secant theta is equal to cosecant theta divided by cot theta. And it is the quotient identity number 11. And in the similar manners, if we pick cosecant theta, it would be equal to cot theta divided by cos theta. It gives us quotient identity number 12. Let's move to next magic. Have a look at this orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines product identities. How? It states if we pick any of the six trigonometric functions, then this trigonometric function would be equal to product of its two neighboring trigonometric functions. For example, if we pick sine of theta, then it would be equal to product of cos theta and tan theta. It gives us product identity number one. Similarly, cot of theta is equal to product of cos theta and cosecant theta. And it is the product identity number two. Similarly, secant theta is equal to product of tan theta and cosecant theta. And it is the product identity number three. Similarly, cos of theta is equal to product of cot theta and sin theta and it gives us product identity number 4. And cosecant theta is equal to product of cot theta and secant theta and it is the product identity number 5. And tan of theta is equal to product of sin theta and secant theta and it gives us the product identity number 6. Let's move to next slide. Have a look at this orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines some product identities also. <coughs> How? It states the product of two trigonometric functions that lie on the endpoints of a diagonal of hexagon is equal to 1. For example, the product of sin theta and cosecant theta is equal to 1. It is the product identity number 7. Similarly, product of cos theta and secant theta is also 1. It is the product identity number 8 and similarly product of cot theta and tan theta is equal to 1. It is the product identity number 9. Let's move to next magic. Have a look at this orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines reciprocal identities. How? It states trigonometric function of an angle that lie on one point of a diagonal of hexagon is equal to 1 divided by other trigonometric function that lie on the other end of that diagonal. For example, if we pick cosecant theta, then cosecant theta would be equal to 1 divided by sin theta. It gives us reciprocal identity number 1. Similarly, secant theta is equal to 1 divided by cos theta. It gives us reciprocal identity number 2. Similarly, cot of theta is equal to 1 divided by tan theta. 
and it is the reciprocal identity number three. Let's move to next slide. <clears throat> Have a look at this orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines reciprocal identities also. How? It states trigonometric function of an angle that lie on the one end point of a diagonal of hexagon is equal to 1 divided by the other trigonometric function that lie on the other end of that diagonal. For example, sine of theta is equal to 1 divided by cosecant theta. It gives us reciprocal identity number 4. Similarly, cos of theta is equal to 1 divided by secant theta. It is the reciprocal identity number 5. Similarly, tan of theta is equal to 1 divided by cot of theta. And it is the reciprocal identity number 6. <coughs> Let's move to next magic now. Have a look at this orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines co-function identities. How? It states trigonometric function of an angle say theta is equal to co-trigonometric function of complementary angle of that angle theta. For example, sine of theta is equal to cosine of complementary angle of theta. That is, sine of theta is equal to cos of 90 degrees minus theta. Similarly, tan of theta is equal to cot of complementary angle of theta. That is, tan of theta is equal to cot of 90 degrees minus theta. Similarly, secant of theta is equal to cosecant of complementary angle of theta. That is, secant theta is equal to cosecant of 90 degrees minus theta. Let's move to next slide. Have a look at this orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines co-functions identities as well. Oh, <coughs> it states the same thing that is trigonometric function of an angle say theta is equal to co-trigonometric function of complementary angle of that angle theta. For example, cos of theta is equal to sine of complementary angle of theta. That is, cos of theta is equal to sine of 90 degrees minus theta. Similarly, cot of theta is equal to tan of complementary angle of theta. That is, cot of theta is equal to tan of 90 degrees minus theta. Similarly, cosecant of theta is equal to secant of complementary angle of theta. That is, cosecant theta is equal to secant of 90 degrees minus theta. Let's move to next magic now. Have a look at this orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines Pythagorean identities. How? It states square of sine of theta plus square of cos of theta is equal to square of 1. And it is the Pythagorean identity number 1. Similarly, square of tan theta plus square of 1 is equal to square of secant theta. 
and it is the Pythagorean identity number 2. Similarly, square of 1 plus square of cot theta is equal to square of cosecant theta and it is the Pythagorean identity number 3. <clears throat> Let's move to next slide now. Have a look at this orientation of arrows now. What does it define? It defines Pythagorean identities also, but in reverse order. How? It states square of 1 minus square of cos theta is equal to square of sin theta. And it is the Pythagorean identity number 4. Similarly, square of secant theta minus square of 1 is equal to square of tan theta. And it is the Pythagorean identity number 5. Similarly, square of cosecant theta minus square of cot theta is equal to square of 1. And it gives us the Pythagorean identity number 6. Wow, it's great, is not it? And this is the end of this video. Thank you for being with me. Stay happy. Goodbye.